grade 12 learners, in this playlist we'll be looking at momentum and impulse. And in this video, we're going to be speaking about the introduction to momentum. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Miss Martin. Subscribe for more physical sciences videos. Now, let's jump right into the video. What is momentum? Momentum can be described as mass in motion. And mass in motion tells you exactly how to calculate momentum if you think about it. Momentum is calculated by taking the mass of an object, multiplied by the velocity at which that object is moving. Now remember, velocity is a vector. That makes momentum a vector as well. Let's take a look at the formula and also let's take a look at change in momentum. Why would there be such a thing as change in momentum? Well, remember, velocity can change. An object can speed up, an object can slow down, an object can change direction. And if your velocity changes, your momentum will change. Let's look at all of those things in this video. First thing that you need to know is that if an object is moving, it has momentum. So me at the moment, I have mass, but I'm standing completely still. I don't have a velocity, I'm not moving, therefore I have no momentum. Calculate momentum, and momentum is the product of the mass and the velocity of the object. So you take the mass in kilograms, mass must be in kilograms, multiplied by the velocity in meters per second, and then we get momentum. And I just want to show you how the unit works. It says here the unit is kilograms, meters per second. If you ever forget that in your exam, it's very easy to remember it. The unit for mass is kilograms. The unit for velocity is meters per second. You see that we're multiplying mass and velocity, so we multiply these two units together. Kilograms, meters per second. That's the unit for momentum. And momentum is represented by this symbol over here. If you have a smaller mass, you have a smaller momentum. If you have a bigger mass, you have a bigger momentum. What about this over here? So we've got this top scenario. We've got a 15 kilogram little car, like a little toy car. If it's standing still, so look at its speed, velocity or speed, zero meters per second to the right. No momentum, no speed, no momentum. If it's moving at 10 meters per second to the right, higher velocity, higher momentum. You see the mass is the same the whole time. Now it has its maximum amount of speed, 20 meters per second or velocity, 20 meters per second to the right. So it has the most momentum. So as you can see, we call Another important thing that you need to know is that momentum is a vector, okay? It's the product of the mass of an object and the velocity. Now velocity is a vector, which means momentum is a vector. And you should know that vectors need a direction. So here's a very basic example. A five kilogram block is moving in a straight line at two meters per second towards the left, Oh goodness, not right. We're going this way, left. Determine the momentum of the block. So momentum is equal to the mass times velocity. The mass is five. The velocity is two meters per second left. So the momentum is 10 kilograms meters per second left. You have to include your direction. You have to, absolutely have to. So a silly example like this probably won't happen in your exam, but it would, if it did, it would be three marks. Blank, naked formula, substituting, answer with unit and direction. Now, if you think about what I was saying about how momentum is all about mass in motion and it's all about an object moving, we know that objects in motion, objects that move, their velocity can change. So you can speed up, you can slow down, and if your velocity changes, that means that your momentum will change. And why would your velocity change? It will only change if there's a net force acting on you. So remember, Newton's first law, you move at a constant velocity. There's no net force acting on you, right? But according to Newton's second law, if a non-zero net force acts on you, okay, then you accelerate, your velocity changes. So. If the velocity of an object changes, its momentum will change. And just so you guys can take this note down in your book as well, why would the velocity change if there's an F net acting on an object? So change in momentum. I hope you guys remember that change is often represented by the triangle. Change in. The triangle means change in momentum. And remember, change is always final minus initial. So if I'm working out change in momentum, 
it's basically your final momentum minus your initial momentum. I hope that makes sense because change is always final minus initial. How can I break that formula down further? How do we calculate momentum again? We say mass times velocity. Okay, so how to calculate final momentum? We would use our final velocity. Then our formula, our change formula says minus. How do we calculate initial momentum? Well, momentum in general is mass times velocity. And because it's initial momentum, it'll be initial velocity. So as you can see, velocity changes. Mass stays the same. So we've got this formula over here. And just so you know, this version of the formula is the one that appears on your formula sheet. Now, as a metric teacher, I set metric exams, I mark at a metric level. The rule for metric exams or exams in general is that you have to write the formula as it is given on your formula sheets. So it's given in this form on your formula sheet. So you are going to have to write it down in that form first. But we know that the velocity changes, the mass doesn't change. So we can take mass out as a highest common factor, as a common factor, the I. Okay, but just keep in mind that this version of the formula is the one that you see on your formula sheets. Now, when it comes to working out the change in momentum, your signs are so important. And remember in physics, we use signs to indicate direction. So which way you choose as a positive direction is completely up to you. You can choose to the right as positive, you can choose to the left as positive, as long as you state it, and as long as you stick with those choices throughout your question. So let's do an example. We've got, ignore the fact that it says example three, I just pulled this from my worksheet of examples that I made. So it says a car with mass 600 kilograms travels in an easterly direction along a straight horizontal road at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second. The driver suddenly increases his velocity, so he puts his foot on the pedal, he wants to go faster, and he increases his velocity to 24 meters per second east, continues to drive in the original direction. Determine the change in momentum of the car. Now notice how when I went through the question, I highlighted the variables. I hope at this stage that that is something that you also do. So I've got my mass, I've got my direction east. So I'm going to take east as positive. I've got my initial velocity, that's VI, and I've got my final velocity. Because they want change in momentum, I need to write out the formula first. So like I said, your formula sheet, the formula looks like this. MVF minus MVI. Let's substitute. The mass is 600. VF, final velocity, is 24 meters per second in the original direction, which is east. And remember, we said east is positive. So we're going to substitute 24 in as a positive. Minus 600 times initial velocity is 20, also east. And we said that east was positive, so we're leaving it as a positive 20. And then we just work that out quickly. I got 2,400, but you cannot leave your answer like that. First of all, what is your unit? Your unit is kilograms, meters per second, and then, are we done? No, we're not done. We need a direction. East. Okay, it's a positive answer, which means our change in momentum is in the positive direction, which is east. Easy enough. Let's take a look at another one. A three kilogram block, so there's my mass slides along a horizontal frictionless path at a constant velocity of 1.5 meters per second. It passes over a small rough patch. So picture this in your mind, it's going over a frictionless path and then it encounters a rough patch. So what do you think is gonna to happen to it? It's going to slow down, okay? So it continues along the original motion. So say it was going to the right, it's continuing to go to the right, but now the velocity is one meter per second. It was 1.5, now it's one. They want the change in momentum, right? So formula first, always formula first. And I get it from my formula sheets. You write it down exactly as is. If you want to take mass out in the next step, you absolutely can. But I'm writing it down as it is on the formula sheet first. Okay, my mass is three kilograms. Then my final velocity, this one, is your final velocity, is one. But... It's going in the in the original direction. Do you see in the question they don't say um, to the right or east or left? It's just they don't mention the direction. They just say original direction. So let's say this way is the original direction. 
your initial velocity is going 1.5 meters in that direction, so it's positive. Your final velocity is still in the same direction, so it's 1 meter per second, it's still positive. I'm going to put a minus over here because my formula says minus, and then 1.5. I hope you can see what we're going to get as an answer. Now, I got a negative. It makes sense that I would get a negative because my final velocity was smaller than my initial velocity. Therefore, 1 minus 1.5, that gave me a negative, right? Negative 0 0.5. So we get a negative answer. But in physics, do we leave our answers as negative? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So if you get a negative answer, what does that mean? Okay, it means that the change in momentum is not in the original direction. So our answer must include direction. So you'll say 1.5 kilograms meters per second in the opposite direction or in the negative direction again how do i know it's in the opposite direction or in the negative direction because i got a negative in my answer but you can't leave your answers negative you have to rewrite it as a positive but then your direction must just say in the opposite direction let's pretend in the question they told me that the original direction was to the right then in my answer i could say to the left if they told me the original direction was north, then I'd get a negative, which means it's not north, it's south. So because they don't tell me right or north or whatever, I'm just saying in the opposite direction. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's do one more. Right, in our next example, we have a 100 gram tennis ball. Already, your, the alarm bells should be going off in your head. 100 grams. Our mass must be in kilograms. We'll convert it in a second, though. A 100-gram tennis ball strikes a wall at 10 meters per second and bounces back in the opposite direction at 8 meters per second. Now, this is a very important example. Let's draw a little picture to help us understand. This is my wall over here. We've got a 100-gram tennis ball going towards the wall like that at 10 meters per second. Then it hits the wall and it bounces back in the opposite direction direction at 8 meters per second. Can you see that this is the first example where we're changing direction? That's very important. And in physics, we always need to choose a positive direction. So let's say towards the wall is positive. Okay, so I'm going to write here towards the wall is positive, which means away from the wall would be negative. So the 10 is towards the wall, it'll be a positive 10. The 8 is away from the wall, we will substitute it in as a negative. Change in momentum is what they want, so let's write our formula, mvf minus mvi. You can substitute directly into this formula, but if you want to take mass out first, you may do that. You don't have to. Okay, our mass, 100 grams. You should know that you need to convert that to kilograms. And it's very important to know your conversions. This is why it's very important to learn it in grade 8 to 9 math and keep it somewhere in your brain. But if you forgot how to convert from kilogram, from grams to kilograms, there's 1,000 grams in 1 kilogram. So to convert from grams to kilograms, we have to divide by 1,000. So it will be 0, 0,1 kilograms. Okay, divide by 100 by 1,000. Our final velocity, remember, 10 is our initial. It's initially going towards the wall, so that's vi. The 8 is our final velocity, but remember, it's going away from the wall, so it has to be negative 8. So the negative is because of the direction. Then, this minus over here is from the formula. Minus positive 10. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And we get negative 1.8. Now remember what I told you guys about a negative, okay? We can't leave our answer as a negative. So it's 1.8 kilograms meters per second. Now, what direction? It came out as a negative. Positive was towards the wall. So negative would be away from the wall. Away from the wall. And there we go. That is how you calculate change in momentum. It's very, very important that you know how to calculate change in momentum because we're going to be using it in follow-up sections like impulse and impulse momentum. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.